Everybody, uh, what's going on? Welcome back to the I Am Bruce Leroy channel. Obviously, this is your boy Bruce Lee. Before we get started with today's video, I need you to do a few things for me. Like, comment, subscribe before I kick all of y'all asses. Now, let's play already. You know how I do already. Follow me on all my social medias, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all at I Am Bruce Leroy. Okay, so, welcome. June, officially the first month of summer. Weather getting hotter. Like like I said in the last video, whatever the case may be. Well, actually, I ain't gonna lie to you. Over here, Chicago has been kind of up and down. We kind of been getting spring weather, which is good. I ain't complaining about. It. I don't feel like getting sunburned all the damn time, right? Uh, but it's either here or there. I hope everybody had a great Memorial weekend. It's been a little bit of a minute since our last video. I just wanna today we were talking about something different. So I said that it's a couple things. I owe you guys an apology. It's a couple things. Number one, I see who's coming back with maybe a button video. Uh, I don't have, to, I didn't have time for that. I barely went to the studio, and because I barely went to the studio last, I only went like two, three days. Uh, it was important that I to get, I had, I got work done, cause I, I, I really didn't get shit done. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't get anything done. I think uh, I didn't really get a lot done last week because I was, my body was so tired. I said so tired. Show sure enough, my body was so tired and I was just I had, I had a hard time getting sleep, so I couldn't get my ass up to go to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Enough so I can give you guys a studio vlog. So I'm not gonna make any promises, but the goal is the studio vlog will be happening. Let me sit my ass up. The studio vlog will be happening uh, sometime this week. So I'll record myself recording. Most likely the next song that I work on, I don't give a shit what it is. I'm gonna. I'm going to film that for you guys, okay? So, yeah, that's that. So I apologize once again. The studio vlog didn't come out. didn't come out enough. And I didn't come out to the studio enough. And as far as uh, the button video, we just, again, for pretty much the same reason, okay? And also, I worked, like, I worked like six days in a row last week, okay? I'm not bitching about it. It is what it is. All right, so today we're going to have a discussion. Now, you guys remember uh, I had a video on Blue Water Road, it got a lot of Kehlani fans upset. It's my honest opinion. I said the album was made. Uh, it was a. It was not a classic. It was, and it, and the truth of the matter is, it really reflected in the sales. Kehlani normally sells in between, I'd say, the ballpark of like sixty to eighty, like. Just short, like her sales are kind of like trippy red sales. It's like in between like 50 to 80K, maybe 90, but it's like hovering around 100K, but it's not exactly quite there. That's normally her sales. Blue Water Road only sold like 21 or 25K or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. Uh, I could have wrote it down, figured I wrote it, but it's so it's, 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 it's 20. Actually, let me take my time that you look that up right now. So 22,000. I was, I was about, I was a little off. But honestly, uh, the production was kind of boring. It was a couple moments where it was like, there was like, Wish I Never Was Good. Uh, Up at Night, I liked that one. Uh, what else? Alter, I, I like the beat, the song. I'm just, eh. It's like she was talking about dead people, and it's kind of like, that's, that's, that's. Like, everybody thought it was a love song because of how, you know, the, the lyrics kind of. You know, was talking about it. Uh, you know, fix you a place. You know, you're, you're thinking about a significant other, and then the way the beat is is very poppy. It's kind of like Prince Michael Jackson esque, in a way. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that's how I felt about Alter, right? So I didn't get the, I didn't get why she chose that song to make it about 
dead people and ancestors and stuff like that. But it's hard music. It is what it is. But all in all, long story short, about Blue Water Road, uh, I was very disappointed. Uh, and again, maybe I didn't listen to the album at a particularly good time because I was still pissed off that we selected Jordan Davis. And again, I'm cool with Jordan Davis now, but I was just, I'm just being honest about what I was feeling in that moment. I was upset that we picked Jordan Davis over Trent McDuffie. And that fucked up my whole night. And literally that, and then come to find out, listening to her album, I'm just severely disappointed. I tried listening to it again, but most likely I'm one of those type of guys where it's like, if I really don't like something the first time, uh, going back to check it, or getting, like, something has to encourage me to check it out. Like, maybe somebody put, like, a short snippet of of that of a song that I that I thought was ass or mid. Somebody put it in, like, a, a TikTok 30-second 30, 30 video. I'm like, oh, and that, that, that catches my attention. That's probably when I would go back and go re-listen to it. But I, if I strong, have a strong dislike it for something, I'm not, I'm the type of person, I'm not going back to it because it feels like fucking torture. And it just feels like a waste of time. So, um... A couple songs grew on me, which I never kind of grew on me. Uh, like I said, I can't even fucking talk. Talk about like, what's so, 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 wait. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I went back and listened to, I like the chorus of a tangerine. And, again, I'm repeating myself here, but wish I never, I, I, I that, that, that song was awesome. And then, what was the other song? That, I, th I think that was it. And everything else is just, yeah, whatever. Okay. So. She's coming out with a new album, Crash, on June 21st. So, so far, she got two lead singles. The first lead single was After Hours. I heard the snippet. I don't remember. I think it was called Move Your Body. I don't remember what the, what the actual sample was. Or You Got It. It was something. That, it's like You Got It, Girl, or Move Your Body. Something like that. It was one of those songs. Matter of fact, see, I, I did not, I'm not doing a good job, man. I, I'm not setting a good example. I should have already had this. Said it was Nina Sky. Move your body, okay. So I was right. It was the second title. So Nina Sky, move your body. That's what she sampled. So I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, this is this. this it's giving me back the uh, the sweet, sexy, savage vibes. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, the, like I like that type. So I'm like, okay, King Lion, he's back. Like that's that, that's the King Lion I want to hear. So I'm listening to the snippet, right? Now I know what y'all asking. What is the purpose of this video? We're actually. I'm gonna table that. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue the, the I'm gonna continue the dialogue that I was just discussing about the after. So I'm listening to this tip. I'm like, oh shit! It's like we ain't gotta take it slow. I'm gonna hit you now. Whatever. I'll Shut the fuck up. I don't remember the fucking rest of the lyrics, but whatever. And my singing is shitty because I just got finished fucking rapping in the mic and I'm about to lose my voice. Anyway, moving on. Moving on from that. I'm not gonna sing again because I sound like shit. It's not like sexy red on a fucking lead sing on her single with uh, Drake and shit. I say who? You serious, bro? Are you fucking serious, dog? Whatever, once your voice is cracking. Anyway, beside the point. Um, yeah, so I listened, uh, I listened to the snippet on TikTok and Instagram. I went crap. I, oh, she's about to be good. And then finally, when the same when the song came out, I think a week or two after the she posted the snippet. Might have been three weeks. It was at least at the very least. I, I I remember it had to be at least two weeks after she put out the snippet. She put out the song, at least. I'm thinking three, but like in the range of like two or three weeks of uh, the initial snippet, and then when she finally put it out, right? So, I'm listening to it, and I'm like, this is pretty good. No, 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 actually, I fucked up. My bad. So, I'm listening to it. I'm like, the first thing I hear is the snippet, right? With the lyrics to the snippet. I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. And then she gets it to, you gave it to my oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, caught up in your zone. I'm like, at first, I ain't gonna lie to you, I wasn't feeling it. Because I'm like, it's just, uh, it was a little all over the place. And then I'm hearing the chorus like, why don't you stay, stay here after hours. And I'm like, it ain't hitting. I don't know what it is. It's like, the song grew on me. Like, overall, I like the song, but I'm not going to lie to you. When I first listened to it, I was disappointed that the rest of the song, especially the chorus, wasn't as... It didn't pop out to me like the snippet, like the beginning four to eight bars of that song. I think it was like eight bars. It was like eight to ten bars. Whatever. I don't remember. 
And it, it, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely eight. It wasn't four. It was, it was like eight to ten bars. Eight to ten years. Count one. Eight, whatever. I, I got the mock mix. But, but uh, bottom line, moving forward from that, my, I'm kind of scatterbrained because I'm trying to like do everything on the fly, and I didn't write. You know, I didn't. I'm not going off a script here. So I've listened to it. So bottom line is the song overall. Uh, again, it grew on me, so I like it. But you know, the rest of the song didn't quite match up to the um, to how good though those eight to ten those first eight to ten bars of the song, which was in her snippet. Uh, I think it was just a little too much singing, and not enough. And then the writing was just kind of meh. It just, it just looks like she's just throwing stuff together. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it hopes that it will be catchy, but it's not written in a way where it's catchy because it's it's it's, it's too wordy on some of the lines. Um, so to me, I like the song again. Once again, the song grew on me, but I'm not crazy about the song. Like I like how I went crazy about the snippet, right? Uh, so, moving forward with that. So now she got this other snippet, and I'm like, this is different. It's like a ballad. It reminds me a lot of, like, You Should Be Here uh, in, in a lot of ways, right? So she got a ballad uh, next to you, and, and, she, and she puts out the snippet. I'm like, this is a different look because, and if I'm not mistaken, I think she announced her album release before she announced her second her second her second most recent single single can't fucking talk she announced her album date before she released the snippet for next to you which is her second single the one that just recently came out this friday uh and i'm like okay well it's not necessarily giving out sexy and like crazy like the way the single came her lead single came into, you know, in anticipation for album. I'm thinking, okay, this is like Sweet Sexy Savage vibes that I'm getting. Like, just, just, just like Sweet Sexy Savage 2.0. This is what I'm thinking. And uh, I'm, li I'm listening to it. I'm like, okay, uh, it's, well, why not throw a little something in there? So I'm, like, I'm kind of like, so I'm listening to this snippet. I'm like, okay, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit because it's not exactly the same vibe as what you were talking about. This album was going to be. And it does, and it, it doesn't necessarily match the vibes of the of the first single. I, again, I, I, I'm not expecting the, the the same damn song twice, but I'm a, I, I want some kind of co I'm looking for a cohesiveness. And it wasn't exactly the same. The same was sounded good, but it wasn't exactly cohesive. So finally, next to you came came out, and I'm like. What the fuck is this? Like an intro to Vulture? Is this a, is this a kind? Is this a Travis Scott track? Like what? Like what? What, what the fuck am I listening to? Cause I'm like, I'm, my my mind is thinking ballad. Like you should be here. Like something along those like, like uh open. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the vibes I'm thinking of based on the snippet. So when I'm hearing all these heavy dark ass drums, and it's the, 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 this dark instrumental with like a with a, like a big ass bass in it. I'm like, where the fuck is this going? And then I'm listening to the to 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 the song, and I'm like, it doesn't even fucking match her vocal style because like, Kaylani's voice is very very bright, and when you're dealing with an instrumental like that, like 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 a Kanye West, Travis Scott type of instrument that's very dark with a deep bass like that. You have to kind of, your voice has to be dark too, it has to be more dark, a little bit more mellow, and it's more or less of melody bass. Like, 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 like you have to let your me melody, like, you have to have like a rap cadence in a way. Like, you, it, it cannot be a sing to match the vibe of like a Travis Scott, Kanye, Vultures type shit. You can't sing sing, right? It, your voice can't be bright. It has to be like, you have to, it's a melodic, it's your rapping. But it's in a somewhat melodic form. But it, your your voice has to match that type of instrument. That type of instrumental is dark. So somebody with a much more warmer, darker tone, something that has a little bit more presence, versus just this very very bright vocal that just kind of a little uh, sing songy. It, it it doesn't. I I you know I'm all over the place to sing songy. Like I'm I I'm, like listen. Here's the thing. It's it's gonna sound confusing what I'm saying, but like basically you 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 can't sing on a, on a, on a, on a track like that. And then I'm listening to the snippet. I'm like, how the fuck is the ballad part of that snippet fits in the instrumental? It doesn't. 
So it's just like, okay, okay, well, cool. You got the little chorus background feel. You got the background vocals. And I'm like, okay, I guess that matches the, the Kanye thing. But when you got the super bright vocals, you're like, uh, and I'm feeling way, way down. It's like super, super bright. And again, I apologize for sounding like shit. Again, I can't fucking sing right now because I've been screaming into a mic and I'm talking right now to a camera. So I'm listening to it. I'm like, how the fuck is the ballad part of that beat going to fit in with the the Travis Scott Kanye Vultures vibe that I'm getting from the, the majority of the instrumental? It doesn't fit, right? You know what I'm saying? And honestly, I'm not opposed to artists trying different stuff. But that's not Kaylani, and her type of vocal style doesn't necessarily match the instrumental. And the way the instrumental was, the beat changes, the um, you know, it, it was just it was very messy and disorganized. And then the video comes out immediately. So like like pretty much I believe like Saturday, either yeah. So Saturday the actual video next to you came out right. And she got the Palestinian flag. She got, you know, these women doing this fucking, their best impersonation of a Spider-Man pose and shit. And then you got, like, like, like you know, everybody did with this horror thing. And I'm like, you know, it's just like, it's just weird to me. Um, and the video and the choreography was just a little, like, I'm not saying it was bad. But it didn't, it didn't match the lyrics. And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know where this is going. So... I'm saying, and then like, you know, she's very, if, you, if you've been on social media, she's been very vocal about what's happening in Palestine. She's been very vocal about, you know, supporting Palestine. So she put that in her video. And I'm like, okay, cool. But here's the problem. What the fuck does your song have to do with Palestine, right? You're not remaking Man in the Mirror. It's not Lil Baby, the bigger picture, right? Those type, it's not Brenda got a baby or uh, that's just the way it is. You know, I think the name, name, the name of the actual Tupac song is Changes. It's not that type of song, right? So a video like that would make sense if you're, if, you know, if you're very, very, if you're making a political message, then your song has to reflect that. But your song is like a, it's a love song, right? So if it's a love song, and you talk about your album is going to be very, you know, upbeat and happy. And then you're putting a strong political message behind it that's, you know, there's some serious stuff that's tied to that, you know, uh, to the situation. Because there's there's innocent people that are getting killed. And there, there's a war going outside, like, 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 like people are really going through it. Your song, again, while the gestures appreciated that that you're, you're supporting people who, you know, who are, are going through a tough, rough situation and you have in your side and you're using your platform to empower and speak about these injustices, cool. But your song doesn't reflect that. You understand what I'm saying? And if you was going to put that in your song, like, when she put, like, it's the mural of names or whatever at, at the ending credits, and she, had, she could have did the flag thing at the end. But she was trying to put be super conscious, socially conscious and political when the song had net, has nothing to do with it. So it, to me, it just confused a lot. So like, while I appreciate the gesture, you know, from a human being, I'm like, you know, that, that's cool to see that you stand up for a, a call, a good cause, and you're, and you're supporting those who, who have been oppressed, right? There's two sides to every story. I don't feel like going into the, 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 the particulars, but, you know... Uh, I, I, I'm very happy for using her platform to empower people and to speak for people who are, who are being marginalized. Awesome. Cool. And, and for people who are there, young, innocent children getting killed, um, and the, and it's a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Happy people, people's houses are getting bombed and shit like that. So again, the gestures appreciated, but when you're doing art, it has to make sense. You understand what I'm saying? And it doesn't make sense for her to do that. Now, if she would have put the Palestinian flag at the end, and maybe political message at the end, like with, with, with the credits and the mural, that makes sense. But you're trying to do it when a song has nothing to do with it, just throwing me off. So, I know what you're about to ask me. Bruce Leroy, you're talking all about all of this. What the fuck, what is, what, what is the purpose of this video? That's what you're probably asking yourself. Because you're, you're going through this whole history, whatever. What is the purpose of this goddamn video? I'm going to tell you. From Blue Water Road being, from not hitting the mark, 
It was supposed to be a healing album. It really wasn't a healing album, right? Uh, production was eh, you know what I mean? And then one thing I noticed too, and and, and here's here's the thing. So I'm gonna mention this very quickly. Kaylani has had a tendency recently. I don't know if if you, be, if you guys have been noticing. Kaylani has a tendency to to shoot videos that have nothing to do with the damn song. So I'll, t I'll give you an example. You know, technically this is T Pain's song. So T Pain, I like that. He's talking about in the song, IG comments, a, a materialistic woman. He's, he's talking about modernized life, and you shot a video like you were in the wild wild west. Makes no fucking sense to me. But I'm gonna. I guess I guess I give her a pass because it was T Pain's video. But that shit was just. It makes no sense. None. You know what I'm saying? Like. You're talking about modern life in the song, but you film a fucking wild, wild west in like the, what was that, the 1850s, 1860s, that makes no fucking sense. That's like me talking about motherfucking Maseratis and Maybachs, and I'm up here, my, my motherfucking video look, 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 look like goddamn Gone with the Wind. Does that shit make sense? No. So I'm like, okay, in the beginning, I'm like, I'm noticing, I'm like, okay, well, whatever. It's, it's a one-time thing, we all, we all... We're not perfect as artists. I'm damn sure as an artist myself, I'm not perfect. The other thing is, okay, cool. So now she feels a video for everything. One of her songs. And it's like, this shit like a fucking four bats video. Where they got, got all these, you know, these, everybody, like, niggas on the block and shit. But the actual song doesn't have anything to do with it. And I'm like, what the, where the fuck is this going? So I'm like, okay. So so the first time with the Wild Wild West shit with T-Pain, I like that. I let that pass. I'm like, whatever. Like, it is what it is. It's, it, I, I noticed it, but I'm not, I'm not paying attention to it like that. They, they would move on to everything, right? And it's not the cow's example, but I, these are the ones that, 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 that have been catching me off recently. So, again, the everything thing, it's like, what the fuck does this song have to do with everybody hanging on the block and shit? I, I don't get it. Doesn't make sense to me. Like, okay. So then now, the video was on point for after hours though. Okay, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hate on after hours. The video was on point. But now we get to this shit with next to you, and she's acting like she she did fucking her version of a cover of of Man on the Mirror, right? It just it does or or the bigger like I'm saying like like a socially politic, a socially a politically charged. A socially conscious, politically charged video she shot for something, a song that has not, really little to nothing to do with it at all. So now, I've been kind of dancing around this. Why am I making this video? I'm making this video to say, I want to start a disclaimer before we really get started to the meat and potatoes of things. I'm a Kehlani fan. I would use the word Stan, but Stan is obsessive. But I'm a super, super, super fan. Kehlani's music not only is, do I, not only do I believe Kehlani is my favorite artist of all time, I think she's the greatest R&B artist of all time. I believe she's the GOAT, this, that, and the third. I believe all of that, all right? I'll argue till the sun now. The same way academics feel about Drake, that's how I felt about Kehlani. Kehlani is my GOAT, right? And not only that, um, she got multiple classic albums, and her music just, didn't do anything for me just like on the fact of, okay, this is like the soundtrack of my life. So I was like, this music sounds good. No. This is like in a way, her music is a soundtrack to my life in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like her music really impacted me in ways. Like the things she done outside of the booth, you know what I'm saying? Especially with, when COVID hit around and she learned how to become a videographer. That shit was inspiring to me. Uh, and, and basically, if it wasn't for her me seeing that and seeing her go out and go, go be a go-getter in the midst of COVID and, and all these things she was doing around the uh, around the time that it was good until it wasn't came out, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have, I would be the artist or the person that I am today. Like, that was very, very inspiring to see that. It's very inspiring hearing her be transparent at Breakfast Club about her going through the mental health struggles. Uh, and, it, and just overcoming those things. So she's been a huge mental health advocate and overcoming that. I've had some issues with mental health myself in the past. Uh, I've, I've, I've overcome them. I'm happy to have overcome them now. And a lot of that was looking at, hearing the stories about how she overcame it. I'm like, damn, she able to do that. 
And she, some of the shit she went through was definitely worse than what I, what I what has happened to in my life. I'm like, God damn, ain't no excuse for me not to go take care of my business. So she's very inspirational to me. Uh, and not just her music sounds could know her. Like her music, has, 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 I have a personal connection with her music and with her as a person. You know what I'm saying? So she, she Kaylani is the GOAT. All right, so I, I just want to throw that out there. So don't, don't, it's not like Kaylani hate theater. That's not what it's about. But this is the problem with fandom, standard, whatever you want to call it, is that everybody has to say, if you criticize an, your favorite artist one time, or you say you don't like a song, or you say you don't like a particular direction that the artist is going, you will automatically stop becoming a fan. People say, oh, you being a fake fan, you was never a real fan the whole time because you're supposed to support everything. No, you're not. You know what I'm saying? You, you support what you support. Everybody has different reasons for why they're fans of certain individuals, right? And what makes you, what, what made you a fan or why you connect with the music is different from what makes another person a fan and why they connect with the music. Uh, does, does that make sense? So, with that being said, I have a theory that Kehlani has fell off. And why do I say that she fell off? Because when you look at her life in the grand scheme of things, what's been going on since Blue Water Road days around that time, like because she she it was a pretty damn long hiatus from it was good until it wasn't to Blue Water Road, right? Not really much, not really active musically. There's some features, couple Lucy's here and there, not really, but really, not even really Lucy singles, just like honestly, uh, features. So she was very, very quiet for a, a, an extended period of time. And then another year and a half, two years passed from Blue Water Road all the way up until now uh, in, tw in 2024. And crash coming out June 21st. Here's the reality of the situation. Here's why I say Kalani's fell off. Because as an artist, it's so important to stay recording music on a regular basis. You don't have to do it every day, but you have to do it consistently. At least like, like listen, I was blessed and fortunate enough during my 11 month, of hi my 11 month hiatus where I couldn't record a fucking thing because like I had no resource, I had nowhere to record. Now, now thank God I got, I, got, I got a place to record. I had nowhere to record at all, okay? So I wasn't able to do shit. And I had to re I had to relearn everything again. I had to learn how to record properly. I had to learn how to set my game properly. Because that was part of the reason why my mixes weren't coming out great. Why I'm like, damn, like, what the fuck wrong with this? My engineer, my engineer ass. Like he, the drums ain't hitting, the vocals ain't loud. Enough. Like, what the fuck is going on? And I, you know, I had to learn about, you know, why your vocals can't really hit above 6 dB. Didn't know that shit, right? You gotta turn the beat down a lot more than just fucking 6 dB. Because you, you're stopping your vocals from getting head wrong. Didn't know that shit until now. So I had to relearn how, re how to record everything and everything. So I was blessed to be able to, and I, I think with me is, is this, is that I'm hungry, I'm determined, and I'm focused. And I'm passionate about this. And I haven't got my opportunity yet. So I think that my mindset is different than most people because I really want this shit really bad. And so I just, I think of things, I'm, I'm in a different headspace. So my music is going to come out three times better because there I'm going through adversity. I haven't gotten on. You understand what I'm saying? So with Kehlani, the question with Kehlani is, what is the purpose of her making music outside of her being an artist and that she is a musician? What is the purpose? The music, how is it a reflection of on her life? How is it a reflection um, about where she's at currently? Okay, cool. She's making happy music, I guess, because she's happy. Cool. But there's not really, if you really listen to the music, it doesn't, there's no direct thing that's happening in her life you could point to that says, okay, I, this song is probably talking about this, this situation. This also about this situation because in uh, goddamn um, it was good until it wasn't. 
There were songs alluding to the YG breakup and, and some, some other shit. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, you could pull, you could kind of in a way pull things. Some, some of the things she was talking about in her interviews, you could kind of pull things and relate. Be like, okay, I see why she's talking about this because she's probably alluding to something she had, had happened to her. Like, uh, fucking, I think it was like, it was, was it bad news? It, it was something. Uh, she filled it in her backyard or whatever. And she showed, like, you know, some comments or whatever. She had a video where she started, she was just filming in the backyard, like, like in a garden or some shit. She had, like, a burgundy jacket. Dumbass. She basically was, like, pulling people with articles or people talking about her, people saying that she's a hoe or whatever, whatever the case may be. And, she, you know, that was something we, we, could directly, we could directly point to. We can't really, I, I no disrespect, I'm keeping it real with you. I can't, and listen, maybe just my ignorance, but I, I'm going to keep it real with you. I can't point to shit. Because the music is just, just sound. It can't be just sound. It has to, in a way, be a reflection of where you're at in life. And her music, as of right now, is outside of okay, this is happy, happy moon music. It's not a reflection of her life because there's nothing to draw from. Okay, and in a way, that creates a stronger connection with the music if we're able to draw a real life example and tie it to. Your music. It doesn't always have to be that way, but here's the problem, right? Let's just say, for instance, okay, I'm not going to put a bunch, I want to keep stay private. I'm not going to put a bunch of real life examples in my music because I don't want niggas to know about what, it's not nobody's business about what's going on in my personal life, whatever case may be. Cool. But when your music doesn't hit, hit, I'm talking about like, if you're just creating music for say creating music, you're just creating singles and jingles, and the motherfuckers is not. Knocking it out the park on a grand slam. Now I'm gonna start looking at you like, okay, what the fuck is the purpose? Because like, clearly you're not making music that's really giving much insight into your actual real life. Your music isn't actually hitting, hitting. And it and and listen, people keep keep it real all you want. I think it was good until it wasn't so like 70 or like 90k or some shit like that. 90k, 75k, all the way down to 22,000, a big fucking drop off. Do you know what that means? You can say, oh, she waited too long to release music. That's part of it. And that's part of what I talk about practice, about staying consistent in the studio. Because realistically speaking, I was making something like the ones that I filmed early because I was damn near filming every day for a, an extended period of time until I caught myself saying, hey, listen, don't give everybody everything. You know what I'm saying? So basically what, what I'm saying is it's like it's very important that you get your shots up. You're not shooting, and you're wondering why in the game you ass. Because your ass not shooting in the gym. And this is what I'm thinking. I alluded to this in the Blue Water Road video. She, at this point in time, I don't think cares about music as much as she once did. There's not really a hunger, a yearn to create music. There's a hunger and a yearn, in my opinion, to live her life, right? She's very vocal about this Palestine, this Palestinian Israel war that's going on. She was she talked about Congo and the Dominican Republic. She alluded to that. Which is which is good. I'm not even criticizing her for that. Good. Use your platform to, to talk about the injustice that's happening around the world. And injustice, one place is injustice everywhere. I firmly, I wholeheartedly believe that. Cool. Awesome. Good. Uh she talks about surfing. She talks about spending time with a day. She's doing, you know, all, and, and she's doing a whole bunch of other stuff that, you know, exploring nature and shit. You know what I mean? Like, she basically, in my honest opinion, is where Cardi B is at. Cardi B don't give a fuck about releasing. I'm mean, going keeping it real with you. Like, you can say, oh, well, her singles didn't really make that big of an impact, right? You can, you can say that. But at the same time, it's like, her way Cardi's focus is, is like, she doesn't really give a fuck about me. She's, she's trying to live her life. That's what, and that's the mindset that I believe Kehlani is at at this particular moment. She's not interested in making music anymore. Not not at the level that she did. It was good until it wasn't. Like, Cloud 19 is a fucking classic. You Should Be Here is a fucking classic. Uh, Sweet Sexy Savage, uh, While We Wait, uh, it was good until it wasn't. Catalog alert. All those shits was a classic. They're not classics because it's like the, the hunger just is not there no more. Because it's like her mind is on other shit. That's why the videos, and listen, I thought it was funny because I'm thinking about Love Live Serve. The 
the love lift, sir, when it, where the, the lyrics don't match the freaking, uh, the lyrics don't match the video. So I'm thinking it's funny at first, but then now I'm thinking it's like, I'm not saying she doesn't care about her art, but it just seeming like, because her mind is preoccupied with so much other shit, that attention to detail is not on her priority list anymore. And as a fan, I'm very, very disappointed because, like, I talk about she's the GOAT and all that. Like, I'm always showing up, you know what I'm saying? I didn't pay the $9.99 for the album yet, but it's June 21st. Like, nigga, June just begun. I got bills. But once I get around to it, yo, I'm, I'm buying it, you know what I'm saying? So no matter what happens after this video, I'm going to support her, continue to support her. She's earned it, in my opinion. She, everything that she's does from this point forward it's just icing on the cake. It's the cherry on top. She's already, you know what I'm saying, she already did. She already put in the work to solidify her greatness. But here's the thing. I don't think she's even 30 years old yet. So really, you're in a prime of your, she's in her late 20s. You're in a prime of your career. She's like 28 years old, I think. 28, 29. You're in a prime of your career. So if you're in a prime of your career, you st your music still should be... Uh, at a high level, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying because not like you're old or whatever, but like like Andre three three thousand. I see why. I guess you know what I'm saying because like he's just he's been doing music for so fucking long. Like you know what I'm saying? He don't really have to do shit else. But you're in the prime of your career. You're 27, 28 years old. Your music quality shouldn't be dropping the way it is. And, and the reality situation is it's it's not the same, right? I'm listening to some other shit. Like for instance, um, she had a single. She was she was she was featured. With NBA YoungBoy, I believe it was my go-to. It was in the lot, you know, it was in the last Slimito, which is actually a very, very good album, by the way. Uh, I ain't gonna hold you. YoungBoy makes some good ass albums. The problem is he released he released so fucking much. I think in 2023 that I stopped listening like my nigga. Can I just fucking focus on one goddamn album at a time? Like, cause, but because when I actually go listen to his shit, his shit be fucking, it should be like really good. But the problem is, if you're giving it too much, if you give, if you're giving the consumers too much to fucking focus on at one point in time, after a while, I'm just on top of your. All right, fuck it. I, if, if if I get to, it, I get to. It. If I don't get to an hour, don't remember. Then it is what it is. So you got to be careful doing it. Like, be active musically, but don't be super super active to the point where you're just like you you just putting so much shit out. You're overwhelming your listeners. Now I don't want to fucking listen to this shit. Cause I'm like, yo, I got other artists I like too. You know what I'm saying? I got other shit I got to I got to do throughout my day. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I go like young boy, young boy makes some good ass music. Beside the point, the type of tempo is like a dance hall kind of thing. She's like, uh, let's listen. If she switched the beat, because she kind of did, she sort of stuck with that. Because she tried to kind of have this long, slow, elongated flow on that song. And it's like, it didn't really work with the fast-paced dance hall-esque type beat instrumental. You know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't fit. So when she switched the beat up, that was good. But I'm like, why didn't you do that for the whole verse? That way if, same way Drake did on Four Batches shit on like uh, Act 3, whatever the fuck you call that song. He slowed it down and kept that for the whole verse because that matched his flow. You're trying to you're trying to do like a very, very sultry, elongated, slow tone, slow tempo tone on a dance hall beat. That doesn't necessarily work. You know what I'm saying? And listen to Shouts from Creed 3. I'm not saying that song was horrible, uh, but it's just, it was all right. I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to even go a step further and say the last good song from Kehlani was Seamless with Babyface. So, at the end of the day, what is the bigger picture? I'm not setting myself up for big expectations for this album. Because it's very clear to me, based on her activity, what she's been doing, based on these singles, that this album is not going to, it's, it's not going to be up there. I think it was good until it was. It's gonna be her. Was it's gonna be her last album of her career that she's gonna be. Her heralding herself as a goat, and I think when it's all said and done, everything else just icing on the cake, and she's just making music because she's a musician. She's not caring about the little details surrounding the music. She's not trying to make an experience. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, well, you, well, you, you can say I'm wrong, but like I'm listening to the shit. It's not fucking hitting no more, at all. And listen, I understand my my expectations are high. I'm a competitive motherfucker by nature. I'm hard on myself more than other people. So motherfuckers be like, oh, what, what the fuck? Do you know you didn't make it. Shut up, bitch. Because I'm telling you right now, you hear the shit I've been working on recently, you motherfuckers going to change your tone. 
You gonna change the tone, I ain't gonna talk to me. I promise you that. If you hear this shit, I'm telling you right now, listen, I, I'm gonna talk my shit real quick. Hold on, let's see what time we got. My nigga, I'm gonna keep it all the way thousand with you. You hear the shit I've been working on recently? I'm telling your motherfucker, your tone gonna change, motherfucker. Your tone gonna change like you put like you put bleach, like your fucking socks turn pink because of bleach in the goddamn washing machine. Stop fucking playing with me. I'm telling you right now, on everything I love, this shit I've been working on, like you thought Road to Double XL was my best, you ain't seen shit. You ain't seen a fucking thing. I'm more focused, hungry, determined more than ever, and I promise you, if everything goes right as far as mixing and mastering, and I'm able to just kind of get in the nitty gritty of marketing my shit, it's a fucking wrap. So before y'all say, oh, you, you didn't make it in your music career, you're, you're still poor, you're this, you're that, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, I promise you, none of you motherfuckers, not your cousin, not your goddamn uh, niece or whatever the fuck you want to break out, I promise you none of them niggas is fucking with me. My ability to make music, you motherfuckers need ghostwriters. You niggas write for you. Y'all y'all get y'all friends to write for each other. Nigga, I don't even know fucking nobody write for me. I write my hip-hop and R&B by my motherfucking self. And by myself. I record myself by myself. I literally write while I'm fucking recording. So play with me if you fucking want to. Go ahead and talk. I dare y'all niggas talk shit in the comments. I will fucking violate the fuck out you, nigga. I promise you. I will violate the fuck out you. You don't need a fucking citation when I'm done. I will violate the fuck out you, nigga. You don't, you don't need a fucking R kid. Stop fucking playing with me, bro. I will violate the fuck out you niggas. Don't play with me. So believe me when I tell you. When I talk about music, I talk about attention to detail and shit and craft, how you craft shit, how you put shit together from an artistic viewpoint. I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Don't play with me. I'm a monster with this shit. So I had to, I had to do a little rant because you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to put niggas in their play because I know niggas will come after me. I know it and I, I want the smoke, nigga. You don't bring smoke to a fucking California wildfire. You don't bring a cigarette to a wildfire, nigga. You will get burned the fuck up. The gas station on fire, you don't sit up there and, and, and fucking come with a goddamn taste. You'll you get lit the fuck up. So play with me if you want to. Go ahead and talk that shit. I want y'all to do it. Talk that shit. Watch what I do. I will violate the fuck out. I will make it zip out your bitch ass. As a matter of fact, I will violate the fuck out you niggas so bad, I will literally take time out of my fucking day to make videos on you niggas. So believe me when I tell you, you don't want to do that. I got jokes for fucking days. I'm a comedian. I, 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 like I said, that's why I say I'm an artist, not an entertainer. I'm a fucking comedian, too. I got mad jokes for niggas. So play with me if you want to. You will get violated. So bottom line is that I'm going to calm myself down. My expectations, long story short, and this video is going to end, is not high for this album. I'm expecting pretty much on the same level Blue Water Road. Just okay music. Because it's very evident to me where her mindset is at. And truthfully, truthfully, it's more on living life outside of the booth than it is and actually recording music that really is going to take off and truly make an impact. I'm just keeping it real. And if you say I'm a fake Kehlani fan, y'all kiss my ass. I'm not. You say I'm a fake fan, you say I'm a backstabber, you know, whatever the case, snake, whatever you want to call me. Well, I was snake guys at one point in time, so I guess I do fit the description, whatever the fucking case may be. But anyway, outside of that, I got to get my honest opinion. I can't bullshit. And I, I don't really make videos about motherfuckers like this, but I have to because it's somebody who I hold in such high regard. So when I get disappointed like this, somebody I hold in such high regard, I had to just make it, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you turn your pain into content. You know what I'm saying? Like, laugh at my pain. I'm Kevin Hart. Ha uh ha. -huh. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's about to go down. No, I'm playing. But yeah, it's, it's, this video is about to be over. And it is over. So I got to say, I share my feelings. Uh, I'm going to buy the album regardless, but I'm not selling myself up for no high expectations for nobody. I know I'm going to get shit done. I ain't caught by everybody else. All right. Enjoy the rest of y'all week. So I'm going to try to come out with y'all with this another studio vlog. And then we'll, how we're going to move accordingly with the button and other videos we got, we got to do. I'll keep updating y'all on social media. So again, it's that I am Bruce Lee right on all platforms, okay? Uh... That's it, man. Eagles mini camp about to get underway. Uh, and that's it. That's all I got to say. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all work week. I'm out of here. Peace. Bye.